Hey GearFacts friends, before even clicking on this link you probably guessed that we're talking about multi-effects en masse. Multi-effects pedals certainly have their critics but there's no doubt that they are extremely convenient and portable and they're also great for people who are starting out and just want to learn more about effects, what each effect means and what it can do. But it won't be long before you're starting to think about sound quality, which is the best, which is the best value for money, which one provides the most diverse effects and what sort of personality do you want in a multi-effects pedal. Well, this is a bit of a guide to take you through some of the basic types and some of the classic versions that I have in my collection, and hopefully it'll help you answer that question. Now, before we get right into it, there is a certain kind of guitarist who Steve Terryberry described as a tone elitist, which I thought was a very good description because the fact is a multi-effect system will never give you the same guitar tone and quality as a great selection of individual pedals, all chained up to a really high quality amplifier. The fact is, like I said earlier in this video, multi-effect systems are built for learning and for convenience. Having said that though, if we don't let ourselves get bogged down in the idea of perfect tone, then we will find that there are a lot of interesting tricks and great musical features in each of these pedals, and they're well worth exploring. In 2016, Boss released the GT1, which is an extremely capable unit. It has a lot of effects on board and a lot of computer connectivity, so if you want a big range of effects and a lot of studio capability in a pedal, then this is a good place to start. But newer is not necessarily better. A moment ago I mentioned the idea of tone elitism, and it was around 2000 that Yamaha released the DG Stomp, which was designed to compete directly with linked pedal boards. It's a half analog, half digital pedal, and in many ways it really does compete with those more elaborate professional setups. This pedal certainly has its fans and critics. Some of the classics are more than 20, 25 years old, like this ancient Digitech RP12, which provides excellent sounds for the studio, but it's also extremely fun. The expression pedal can do all sorts of crazy things, and there are some very weird effects and some very weird pathways that you can chain your effects through to create some really interesting sounds. And another ancient classic, the Korg AX300B. This is another pedal that shows us that open-mindedness is really important when you're choosing a multi-effect system. It's built for bass guitar, but I've used it on various guitars and found all kinds of varying and very interesting results. And the same is true for the Boss ME8B. Amazing effects for six-string guitar. Fairly limited in modulations, but it does have some clever tricks up its sleeve, and it's a really, really fun pedal to play. And after all, that's why we all play guitar, isn't it? We came to have fun. If you really don't want to have that bass label, though, there is an ME8. These pedals came from about 1996 and they are both excellent performers with a lot of analog circuitry in them. Speaking of analog, you will occasionally see pedals with a tube drive as well. You can see on this G7.1UT from Zoom that there's an energizer grill there and underneath that you'll see a 12AX7 vacuum tube which is used to boost the tone of this digital pedal and make it sound a little bit more organic and natural. And the same theory was used a few years later on the Zoom G5. Behind this tube booster logo is another vacuum tube, again a 12AX7. And that's used to give a bit of liveliness to the series of digital effects shown on each of these screens. Or if you can live without that tube and you just want a bit of digital craziness, it does have a younger brother, the Zoom G2.1U, one of my all-time favourite pedals. Great fun to play. Here's an example that shows us that bigger is not necessarily better. Here we have the larger ME50 next to its forerunner, the ME25, which is physically smaller, but it really does deliver better guitar tone than the ME50. They're both fun to play and they're both very versatile, great for live work, but really my choice would be the ME25. Moving up the price chain, you've got Line 6's HD series. These are monster pedals. They really have a lot of effects built in, a reasonably high level of editability, and they're built extremely tough. There's no doubt that the HD series is one of the leaders in tone quality, but they're also one of the leaders in digital synth effect craziness as well. So really you can come at this pedal from any angle, whether you have a desire for the classic sounds, or whether you really want to experiment and make something that's brand new and really weird and interesting, the HD series, in this case the HD 400, could be a really good choice for you. And along the same lines, but going back about 15 years, is the Boss GT6. This is a bit of a classic as well. Very quick editing system, some very new and interesting modulation effects, and a very assignable expression pedal make this one a really fun unit to own. Still reasonably common and easy to find, quite affordable, and it also comes in a desktop version, the GS10, which has some extra features for studio recording, as well as a pair of built-in speakers. And speaking of studio recording, 
Multi-effects don't necessarily have to look like pedals. This one's a desktop multi-effects system by M Audio called the Black Box, and it has all kinds of sequencing effects. In other words, you can make your wah pedal and your phaser sound and all those kinds of time-based dynamic sounds run to a sequence which is perfectly synchronized with a drum beat, which it also provides on board. So again, it's about open-mindedness. When you're in the music store looking for your multi-effects system, don't just look at the pedals. There's all sorts of other alternatives. And I just want to finish by saying one thing. Don't discount the possibility of buying one of the smaller multi-effects units for a very low price. Sometimes these have some awesome effects built into them. Once again, nothing on it is going to satisfy the tone elitists, but they're great fun to play because the makers will generally put some effects into these kinds of pedals that are designed to thrill you right out of the box. In this case, it's the Zoom B10N, another bass pedal which I use for all kinds of guitars. It has some brilliant synthesizer sounds on it, some crazy delays, and an absolutely amazing particle reverb. Considering little units like these are usually under $100, they are well worth a look. So that's my collection as it stands in this year 2017, Gearfax friends. I would finish off by saying that when you're choosing a multi-effects system, don't be guided by anyone else's opinion. Just have a look around, try a few things, and buy what feels good for you. Buy what makes guitar playing the most fun, okay? Like I said, that's what we all came here for, to play guitar, have some fun, and listen to some awesome sounds. Thanks for watching Gearfax guys, I hope you found this video informative. Please like, comment or subscribe and I really look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.